Okay, well, we just finished up cutting that real nice spruce log there. Had a couple issues with starting up the mill, but other than that, it really cut exceptionally well. So I'm gonna continue to make how-to videos about how to set up the mill, how to replace the edger belts, the main belts, and various things like that as those issues come up for me. I have them all planned out. So I hope this video was entertaining, interesting, or uh, if you purchased one of these mills and you're trying to figure it out, I hope that something I did here helps you out. Um, I had to teach myself from the book and the first year was pretty painful of uh, wasting time and wasting timber. So I hope this helps you out. Um, next video, we're gonna be firing up this Kenworth log truck and heading out to our second growth spruce unit to pick up a truckload. Um, these same logs that I've been milling up here. So if you'd like to be here with me for more days of milling, if you'd like to see more how-to videos about how to sawmill, um, please remember to click on the like and subscribe buttons below. And I've also linked a few videos below of us um, using these mills, just milling, not so much how-to. So if you enjoy the seeing the logs being broken down and if you enjoy that process as much as I do, uh, please remember to click on those links uh, below for those other videos. Um, it's a pretty crisp uh, fall winter day here and I can really smell the snow so I think it's coming soon so we're gonna need to get out uh, log trucking here shortly so if you'd like to come trucking with me in this 1964 Kenworth log truck please remember to click like and subscribe below thank you so much for watching This video is the first video of how to operate a mobile dimension sawmill. My mill is an older model, the model 127. You can find these mills around on uh, things like Craigslist and uh, Facebook Marketplace, sawmillexchange.com, and you can pick up an older mill, especially if it doesn't work, for surprisingly cheap. We bought this mill this was one of the cheapest mills that we could find at the time. $9,500 is my memory. It was basically just a pile of rusty parts. The engine and the carriage were in pretty good condition, but the end stands, the track, and everything else was all rusted out from being mounted, set up, just up from the beach. So the salt water was right here, and they'd roll the logs out of the salt water onto the mill. It's all rusted out. So. Over the years, I've completely rebuilt this mill from nothing. So it actually has new end stands, new cross members, all new bearings, new edger shaft, um, and various parts all over the mill. So, you know, this mill is probably about 65% replaced. We're cutting up a nice big spruce log today. You can see her beside me. Well, nice medium sized spruce log. So the first thing we're going to start with today is I'm imagining that you've read your book and you've set up your oh come I think that's my dad. <laughs> imagining that you've read your book and you've set up your mill and you're at the stage where you're ready to turn it on and you're you know want to learn a bit more about it or maybe you're just interested in sawmilling. It's kind of a cool operation. These are cool machines. Or maybe you're interested in purchasing seeing this mill and you want to kind of check it out first so you got your mill all set up you think it's ready to go now it's time to put a log on the mill you want to move the mill over and up so that you've got room to put it to that but you've got room to put it there on the mill and you want to be really careful when you set it down that you don't roll it really fast because these log, what do they call it, the log holders that the log sits on and clamps into, just have these little two inch dogs and they work really well, but if the log has momentum it'll roll over it. So we're going to go ahead and set the log on here, clamp it in, and we'll get started uh, with the sawmill in.
All right, so here we've got the log on the mill. So far, so good. Uh, I actually didn't do a perfect job there. I got one end of the log over the uh, the log holder, if you saw that. So I did not mean to do that. Normally, I try to be real careful, but. So. You know, the first thing to remember about sawmilling is just how dangerous it is. Okay? I look at these things. You know, you put your hand in here. If part of your clothing gets caught in here and sucks you in here, um, it can be really, really bad. You got a lot of sharp teeth, so you'll cut yourself when you're sharpening it. Stuff like that. That being said, if you stay back behind the mill on this side and you don't walk out in front of it over there you're actually pretty safe the mobile dimension mill will throw its dust out that way and it does throw it on both sides so really the safest spot to be is behind the mill at all times and you'll see me do that so this video is going to be how to operate the mill if you'd like to see a video about uh, just the mill cutting, and if you'd like to see more of this mill operating at the end of this, I'll link a uh, few more videos below. So I'm also going to, over the coming months, I'll go through videos of how to completely disassemble and assemble this mill. I need to do that soon. And uh, I'll go through videos of how to replace every part on it. The, edge your belts, the main belts, all that kind of stuff. And we'll see, maybe we'll break something today. So, the mill itself is very simple. So it basically does two things. It moves up and down, these uprights. And you do that using this that up right here so there's an electric motor right here and here's my control So, you can see the mill goes up, up and down. The other thing that does the mill does is it goes side to side. Let's come in real close here for this one. So this handle moves it side to side. And this little rotating device is the gauge to decide how wide your lumber is. So to start, you make your first cut and then you can spin this by hand to get it set. You put it at zero. You wanna make a two inch board you make your first cut, let the mill return, and you crank it over exactly one, two. And that will automatically account for the width of the saw blade. So the mill actually moved over about two and a half inches. And that's because the saw blade is about two inches. So every time, the easiest way to do it is every time you make a cut, you restart at zero. Basically, the third function of this mill is you can push this button in right here and move one end of the mill side to side. The reason you do that is you want your mill to be lined up perfectly with the log. With You want your mill to be lined up with the center of the heart of the log, basically, going end to end, and that's how you do that. Um, model 128 and a little bit, some of the newer models will be a little different, but the the basics are all the exact same here. So, you got your log on there. 
you're all ready to cut. I remember the first time I did this, uh, no one showed me how to do it. If you can go and spend a day with a sawmiller, you're going to be a lot better off than me. Uh, my first day was terrifying. So I got this thing all put together. I rebuilt it and just sent it down there. Kind of hope for the best. <laughs> I want to try to help you be a little more confident with that today. So first thing you need to know are how to shut it off. My mill, there's a number of ways to shut it off. Okay. First one is on. First one is on the throttle. This is the throttle. You can push it in to kill. And you can pull the switch out to run. So this one's really handy because you can just tap it with your hand. Second way to kill a mill, you can turn off the key. You can do that anytime you want. This will kill it. This will kill it. Third way to kill my mill, which is the one you use when you're uh, just normal operating it, is right here, is a little butterfly. Or, that's what I call it. It's just a little valve on the side of the carburetor. It's the throttle. And most of the time when you want to kill your mill in normal operation, like at the end of a cut and sitting here idling, you push that over and that's what kills it. The Volkswagen mill will keep running even with no spark. It'll actually diesel for a while. So that's what you want to do there. So I'm hoping that you've got a newer mill than me and you've got the, or the same mill with the remote kill switch as well. So you're gonna have to turn this thing off sometimes while it's cutting. Uh, stuff's gonna happen. It'll bind up, it'll jam up, uh, bad things will happen. You need to know how to cut, kill it. That's like the number one thing you gotta do. You gotta run up there and shut it off or you gotta press your button if you got your thing. So after you learn how to shut it off, you wanna do two things. You wanna go over the whole mill and you want to make sure that all the bolts are tight. And I can't stress this enough. Our first years with this mill, stuff would fall off like, oh, this bolt right here. You know, that's not a, that fell off and like, you know, spit metal nuts like 50 feet out the end of the mill that way. So most important bolts to check your first days are these ones. And these are the bolts that connect your track right here. Mine have been tight for the last five years, so I'm confident that they're not gonna move, but we're gonna go ahead and just look at them today. Every day we started the mill for the first years, we'd come out here with our sockets and check them after we saw that some of them rattled loose. So you wanna go along and just make sure everything is tight. Make sure the bolts are in, make sure there's no loose metal parts. So on my mill, I replaced these my dad and I, so these are new, this foot is new, and then this is still the original track. You want to make sure you've got a stop block here on the end of the mill, or your mill will actually just probably fall off the end. I haven't seen that happen, but you know, you got to have that stop block, I think, or it'll just fall off of there. So this mill has a little bit of an extension. You might have a stop block here, but if there's no stop block, you need to install it. It's probably there. So make sure you got your stop block so the mill won't go off the end. Make sure everything's bolted up. Then you want to come back here and for the Model 128 with the hydrostatic drive, it'll be a little different. It's a little simpler. You just basically got a little kind of hydraulic motor and a lever to go forward and back real easy. In this case, this is the return device. So this string here will pull out as the mill goes down. And when you want the mill to come back to you, you grab this with your hand to stop this wheel from rolling. That string will go tight. And what it does is it pulls this little triangle plate. And that moves that lever right there. And that makes the mill switch into reverse and it'll return to you. So you wanna make sure those things are in place so that when you send your mill down there, the track, it doesn't just like, you know, go to the end and fall off, right? That'd be really bad, really bad day. Okay, so, you know, I can't 
go through every safety thing with this mill, but I'm just gonna tell you the few basic things to keep yourself safe for today. Number one, you need to think about this danger area, okay? It starts here. You wanna stay over here. You can go behind the mill over there, but you really, this is where it's safe, okay? This square that I'm in, okay? Don't go over there. You'll see me go over there, but it's dangerous. And then you gotta understand that if you put your hand in there, you'd be in trouble. So here's where you wanna be, right? I would say two things. Number one, if anything really, 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 really bad happened, like if this thing, like if everything was like breaking apart and all this bad shit was happening, you know, you might be safer to just stand back for a minute and wait for the belts to burn up and break or something than you would run up there and shut it off. I've always ran up and shut it off immediately. Conversely, if you don't shut it off quickly, when the blades bind up, the belts will burn up like, I mean, done. Like, it'll just burn them all up. Your mill, you know, it's a lot of friction. Could potentially light on fire. Um, if you light this on fire, it's really, really, really bad. They told me the block is like made out of magnesium or something. So once it lights on fire, you, the only way to put it out is to bury it. So I've got a bunch of sand and a backhoe. So if it ever did light on fire, I'm gonna bury it with sand. So we're gonna go ahead now, fuel up the sawmill and start it up. Okay. So like I said, I'm gonna do this uh, video in parts and some of these parts are gonna be a uh, complete disassembly and reassembly. You have to kind of, at least with this mobile Dimension 127, you have to rebuild it. Like if you use it like I do a couple times a year, you have to take it completely apart, put all new belts and all this stuff on there or replace, you know, some of the belts and then put it all back together. It's just part of the deal. It's a lot of moving parts. They're wonderful machines. I mean, I, you know, I give it a 10 out of 10, but it's also, it's a kind of a lightweight sawmill for the amount that it actually does. It does a lot of work for what it is. And uh, it's just, you know, everything's a little, it's a little finicky with these things. It took me a year, year and a half to really get mine to work. Um, I was cutting giant old growth spruce, which was really challenging. I'll take a second to talk about that. So a huge part of your success at this mill is gonna be depending on your timber. So if you've got trees that grew perfectly straight, they didn't grow tipped, and it's like an easy wood to cut, you're gonna have a really good time with this mill. If you're cutting trees that are have a lot of tension in them, so tension usually comes from a tree that grew um, leaning to one side or the other, and you'll have a lot of issues. The blades will bind up. Um, it can be really frustrating. So your instinct will be to cut up like your worst logs first, you know, and that's okay. But I would suggest choosing a log that's pretty healthy, pretty straight, pretty clean, something easy to cut, and then take a lot of small cuts off it. That's really the way to learn with this mill. A really nice log makes it a lot easier to get it lined up. So, and we're gonna go through all that stuff, alignment, everything in the coming videos. The simplest way to think about this mill's alignment is just that the blades need to run parallel to the direction that they're cutting, okay? You read the book, you actually put a little bit, the edger blades are tipped down just slightly, and that's really, really easy to do. Um, I'll show you how to do that. But don't overthink it. It's just the blades need to be parallel to the direction that they're cutting. And if they're not, it's really easy to tell. Um, and I'll show you how to do that as we go. You tell the big blade by looking at it as it's cutting. And then after it makes the cut, you see if there's more marks. So the blade's spinning like this. And you see if there's more marks where the teeth are coming up or where the teeth are coming down. If there's more marks where the teeth are coming down, you need to turn the blade this way a little bit. And if there's more marks in the front, you need to turn the blade the other way a little bit. And with the main blade, you should see the even amount of marks going both directions like this. So 
we're gassed up. Everything looks good. We're gonna go ahead and uh, check the oil and start up. Okay, it's an it's an air cooled engine. So all you have to do for safety is check the oil, and then you need to make sure that the engine is cleaned and not covered in dust. If it gets too much sawdust kicked on there, it will overheat, and that's it. There's no coolant. So I don't actually take the dipstick all the way out for this because there's so much dust that every time you get a little bit of dust in there. If you look through right here on my mill, you can pull it up. You can look at it perfectly full and you can put it back in that's it pull the choke you want to pump the throttle I find this really helps um, these kind of engines they just kind of need a little blast of gas to get going I've always found out with this one so pump the throttle and then you can check that the throttles working check that the chokes working and we'll go ahead and turn the key <laughs> Okay, pump the throttle.
Okay, so that's how you want to kill your mill. So, um, the Volkswagen engine, I'm sure there's thousands of videos of how to work on Volkswagen engines. Um, they're very simple gas engines. I'm not exactly sure what happened there to me. I think we might have had a little bit of water in the gas or something because it, uh, when it finally started, it blew tons of steam out and then now it runs great. So where we're at now is, okay, you got your mill set up, you got your log decked, you got your log clamped and your mill's all ready to go. Uh, you really want to let these engines warm up pretty good. Uh, it's got a temperature gauge here. I like to get it up to like 140 before I start cutting. Um, it just seems like with this Volkswagen engine, it doesn't really get its power, the torque that it needs until it's really warmed up well. So first thing you need to do is you want to line your mill up with the log. So if you look down here, we are, you can kind of, it's hard to see it. So we're a little bit out of line right now. We should be over like this. See? There we go, you can see it. So what I need to do is take this end of the mill and move it over to the right. So in order to do that, what you do is push this button in right here. Could be a little different on your mill, but that's the idea. And then you can move this end of the mill side to side independently from the other end. I'm going to crank it over and I sight down here. Well, I think that we're lined up good. You release the button and you have to jiggle this a little bit. Make sure that you reconnect to the other end of the mill. Okay, so we're going to get another chance to do that as well. and. Sometimes you have to line it up a couple times so you get it perfect, but you get another chance. So what we got to do now is we need to choose the height that we're going to operate at to start with today. So we've got a height gauge here on your mill. So I've got mine set so I can go all the way down to the very bottom to zero and at zero I'm about one inch above the steel tops of those. Um, in this case, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take a band of two by fours across the bottom of the log on the flat. So that means that from zero, we're gonna come up two inches plus a half an inch. Mobile dimension mill, you always have to add the half inch on the height for the kerf of the edger saw blades. Half inch seems to be about perfect. I think it's actually more like, you know, 7 16 but so we're going to come at the bottom of the log and we're taking layers of two by fours across the bottom on the flat. And then part of the reason I did this today is that we're just cutting two by fours to start. So it's really simple. So then we're just going to take one layer on the flat. Then we're going to take vertical layers of two by fours across the log. And then we'll see whatever we get on the top. Maybe we'll get another layer on the flat. So we're going to go two for a two inch plus a half. Then we're going to go up four, which is six and a half plus a half. Then we're going to go up four again. Forgive me, I'm just waking up all the way here to 11 plus a half. <laughs> and then let's go again. So we're at 11 and a half right now. And I can tell that we can come one more up. So we're going to go ahead and go from 11 and a half to 15 and a half plus a half, 16. Like I said, I'll slowly go through all the alignment and all those things and it'll all be on these videos and you'll be able to search for it in the future. This is just like most of Dimension 101. Hopefully you've got your book and hopefully this will help you out a little bit. So, okay. We're gonna go double check that in a minute, but I wanted to show you here. So the bottom edger blade right here is what we're setting with that height. So I'm I'm way up here near the top of the log, okay? And that's because I'm gonna take a, a layer of one by twos across the top so I get some stickers. I could come down four inches right now and I would get each cut, I would get a piece of bark, then I would get a two by four and bark, two by four bark, two by four bark, two by four bark. But 
I want to get those one by twos for stickers. So we're going to start right here. At this height, we've got our uh, sawmill parallel to the log. So let's go check it out one more time. So from here, we are at 16 and a half. Okay. We're going to drop down four and a half to 12. We're going to drop four and a half to seven and a half. And then we're going to drop. Let's see, I think we got one off there, right? That's so funny. Let's try it again. So from two, two and a half, we're going to go up four and a half to seven. Yep. Four and a half to 11. Yeah, so we should be at 16. That's what I had in my mind. Sorry. Okay. I knew we were supposed to be at 16. There you go. That's pretty simple math, but sometimes it just takes a minute. Oh, that's a little nasty. So from 16, that'll be our first cut. We're going to take a layer of two by fours off the top. Well, one by twos off the top of the log. We're going to come down four and a half. And we're going to come down a half and four. Four and a half to two and a half. And at two and a half, we're going to take a band of two by fours across the bottom. So let's go ahead and make our first cut here. So we're going to try to start the mill up again. Hopefully it goes better. second blade out of the way and use a big edger blade. Um, I cut with the big edger blade mainly for years and I loved it. Now I'm cutting with the two smaller edger blades today because it's faster for making like two by fours. It's, the mill's fun in both setups. It really is. It's got pluses and minuses. So here you go. You got an edger blade there. That one's fixed. This edger blade, you move up and down the shaft to choose your height of lumber. So, right here, this is the control for that. Take a look. down to two inches because I want to make one by twos. So we're going to make our first cut and it's just going to be a piece of bark. Maybe the second one will be bark. And then we're going to move the mill over one inch and every time we move it over one inch we're going to one by two. It actually moves an inch and a half. But so we just need to let it warm up a little bit more. time to just look over your mill make sure everything looks okay make sure everything's bolted in make sure all the belts look good my edger belts are just about to break so you know I usually run this stuff till the end and replace it because we're trying to get miles out of it but you can replace them anytime they look bad probably be better practice so our edger belts might blow out today they might blow out this first cut I don't know but when they do we'll replace them so here we go your speed control. You pull it out to go faster and you push it in to go slower. This lever makes the mill go forward and it makes the mill come back to you. When you pull 
pull the release, the return right here, when you pull this, it makes that little part right there come up. And that's what brings the mill back to you. We'll go ahead and make our uh, first cuts here today. take one inch cut all the way across the log and that's to align the edger blade which I will show you.
Okay, so now I'm gonna show you why we made those little one inch cuts across the top and how to align the edger blade. Okay, so the blade alignment on these mills is actually really easy. Um, I remember doing it with the book and it just seemed so complicated, but uh, this is really, really, really easy. So take a look here. What we did was we made one inch cuts all the way across the top of the log, and then we centered the saw on the log and we slid it kind of out here to the middle. So what you do is you look really closely at the front tooth. Let me get this out of the way. You look really closely at the front tooth and the back tooth. So the best way is to just take a credit card or a note card and slip it between the tooth and the log here and between the tooth and the log here. So I can look at mine and this blade is just less than a 16th inch up from the log. It's very, very close. This tooth is, I can see it, it's a full 16th maybe plus up. So that's perfect. Um, you want this blade tipped just very, very, very slightly down. Good way would be just stick your card under there. If it's tight, like if, it, if it's got pressure on this side and it's easy on that side, you're good. If you could just barely get it on that side and you can't get it on that side, it'd be good. When in doubt, just set it closer to flat. Like if this thing is flat, it's fine. I'm not convinced the slightly down cut is super important, but uh, we do it and it always works. So that's it for edger blade alignment. The blade just needs to be flat to your cut, slightly tipped forward. So for this blade, the way you align it is you make a couple cuts. So our next ones are gonna be four inch. And when we do the four inch cuts, we're gonna look at the blade in the back and the front of the cut while it's going and see if it looks centered. Sometimes you can just see it's just not like the mill is going like this. Is the blades, here we go. The mill, the blade is actually tilted as it's going forward. So is it straight? If it looks off, you can change it. Then you look at the marks on the log and I'll show you what that looks like here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead. We got our first pass taken off of this. Everything's looking great. We're gonna go ahead and drop back and make two by fours. I could actually make two, two by fours at once right now, but we're just gonna try doing one. Well, should we go for it? Yeah, let's go for it. So we're gonna go for two two by fours at once here. Why not? So you set your top edger blade to four inches. Do you see that? So that sets this distance between the two blades at exactly four inches. So we need to drop our mill four and a half inches for that. Well, we're gonna make another two by four here above this. And the top of that two by four is gonna be this cut we've already made. So we're gonna drop four and a half and another four and a half to nine inches. So the bottom two by four is gonna be perfect no matter what, because this is fixed. The top one, you wanna make your first cut, your first two by four, measure the width, and you might need to move your mill up or down about a 16th of an inch or an eighth of an inch to make that, uh, to make that work out nicely there. So let's go ahead and do that. down nine inches that's four and a half plus four and a half from 16 down to nine right yep and rev the mill up and make a cut and see what happens here.
is my brain going so slow? <laughs> okay. So we're actually going down to eight. Sorry, guys. I can't believe I'm making these mistakes today, but hey. I have caught myself every time. Uh, 16 minus nine is seven. Okay, let's try that again. So that's the second log stabilizer. You can only use that when you're making eight inch cuts or bigger. You just crank that wheel down until it's got some tension, it's kind of spring loaded, helps the mill go down the track. Let's go ahead and uh, make some more cuts. 
right, this board came off from between the edger blades. It is exactly four and a sixteenth of an inch. This is the board that came off the top. Ooh, see? So this board is, it's four and three eighths. So the ones that come between the edgers are perfect. This one is a little bit big. So what we have to do is the mill needs to come up a quarter of an inch. We're shooting for four and an eighth. So let's look at it. That's about it. So that was about a quarter of an inch. So when you're doing one board at a time and you can keep that edger blade on both edges, they all come out perfect, which is great. This method, you've got to fine tune it a little bit after the first one, but you can still get it basically perfect. So let's go ahead and uh, make a few more cuts. I'm gonna take a quick second to show you this here. So, what you're looking for, oh, this is kinda of cool. There you go. So you see those marks? That's how you tell if your main blade is aligned. So, you should be seeing about half, which means these are all swept up. So these are being from the back of the blade. The curve would be going the other way if we were seeing them from the front. So I can see that through this section, you see how you can see them lightly on the front? Through this section, and I can see a few on the back. This is just perfect. That's what it should look like. You see that right there? How it's like a, you're making X's, they're going this way and they're going this way. Okay. Um, seeing parts of the log where you see a little bit more of one side or the other is fine. That just means, you know, maybe it was struggling a little bit, something was going on. Um, if you look really, really closely, you see these ones? You can see the cross hatch going the other way. So that means that that blade's pretty darn close to alignment. Um, I know it's good because it's been cutting good, but. That's pretty close. You should see it a little more consistently, but if everything's working perfect and you're seeing the hatch going both ways like that, um, you're good. If you were having issues and you were seeing with the main blade and you were seeing it more on one side, then I would say yes, change it. But we'll go ahead and make a few cuts. This seems like it's um, pretty ideal here. Real nice log, we're getting two two by fours per cut. So this is the mobile dimension mill. It's kind of a cool angle, really in its, just in its best environment. It uh, it can cut really nice, like four by 12 and four by 10 beans all day, but it really shines in just spitting out two by fours or two by six like this, because you can get two at once and it's very fast. I mean, you can see I can barely keep up with it by myself, so. I honestly, I often will just cut one board at a time because I can't keep up <laughs> with the speed. So let's go ahead and uh, spit out a few more here. So on the handle, we're making two inches. So I reset it to zero every time. So right now you reset it to zero. Then you're gonna pull the handle up, you're gonna go one, you just bring it right to the two. And that's it. And every time you reset it, one and two. It's very simple.
Okay, we need to sharpen up here. So you could see in that last video that the mill was cutting a little slower. It was blowing a little bit of smoke, struggling a little bit. So that's a surefire sign that uh, that your mill is uh, dull. So here is another way to tell. You look at your dust. So here, this is a very fine dust. That's from my last cut. It's very fine, okay? When it's sharp, it should make pieces like this. Okay, can you see that? That is like, that's what it should be making. So I can tell just by the dust that the main blade is dull. Conversely, if we look over here, you can see this dust is very, look at this, big shavings. So that means that the edger blade is still pretty sharp. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, sharpen up everything and finish up this uh, beautiful Sitka spruce log. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and sharpen up our blades here. So this is the only time I've ever hurt myself sawmilling. Uh, right here. So you want to be really careful when you're moving the blades, when you're working around the blades. Um, I just I've cut myself on them really bad before. So the sharpener is very cool. It clamps on like that, right onto the blade. It's got a little grinding wheel. Turn it on, and then you use this knob to advance or uh, retract the grinder. And you just want to kiss the teeth. So you want to do the smallest amount possible to sharpen the tooth but you really need it to be sharp. You need to be able to look at the end of it and see no reflections, no shiny corners, nothing. So these main teeth are actually at the very end of their life. My grinder, it grinds across the teeth and then it's just still grinding on the gullet as it goes in here. So this is one of the last times that these teeth will be used. I just replaced the edger teeth and I will link that video below. And I'll make another video as soon as I need to replace these teeth. So it's really easy. Clamp this on there. Make sure you're not, so here I'm too far advanced. Make sure you're not too far advanced. Turn it on. That's it. I always do the main blade and then the edger blades, or I'll do the edger blades and then the main blade. Because the settings, will, the depth setting for your grinder is a little different, so it makes sense. Again, just clamp that baby on there. Check that you're not too advanced. Turn it on.
length of shavings now. With the, With the sharp blade, you can see the length of shavings.
So there's our log truck right there, the Kenworth. We're gonna unload that and get back to the forest here soon. So now, we're doing really good. We're about two thirds of the way through our tree. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna drop down and take a single pass of two by fours, and then we'll drop one more time, and we're gonna take two by fours on the flat. So these ones will be two by four like this, and on the very bottom we'll take one layer on the flat. So this is pretty straightforward. We need to go down four and a half inches. I try to film myself, but today I'm trying to film more of the mill and less of me. So hopefully you guys can see something that I'm doing that'll help you out here. So I apologize if you're just looking at my butt all day. That might be what this film ends up being like. <laughs> so we're taking two by fours now, right there. Our blades are set at four inch. So in this case, the top blade is just gonna skim across the top, and that'll make certain that our boards are the perfect dimension.
couple two by fours on the flat. So this is a cool way to sneak a couple out of the bottom of the log, I'll show you. So they're two inches high and four inches wide. With the big edger blade, you can make two by sixes on the flat, which is really nice.
Okay, well we just finished up cutting that real nice spruce log there. Had a couple issues with starting up the mill, but other than that it really cut exceptionally well. So I'm going to continue to make how-to videos about how to set up the mill, how to replace the edger belts, the main belts, and various things like that as those issues come up for me. I have them all planned out. So I hope this video was entertaining, interesting, or uh, if you purchased one of these mills and you're trying to figure it out, I hope that something I did here helps you out. Um, I had to teach myself from the book and the first year was pretty painful of uh, wasting time and wasting timber. So I hope this helps you out. Um, next video, we're gonna be firing up this Kenworth log truck and heading out to our second growth spruce unit to pick up a truckload. Um, these same logs that I've been milling up here. So if you'd like to be here with me for more days of milling, if you'd like to see more how-to videos about how to sawmill, um, please remember to click on the like and subscribe buttons below. And I've also linked a few videos below of us um, using these mills, just milling, not so much how-to. So if you enjoy the seeing the logs being broken down and if you enjoy that process as much as I do, uh, please remember to click on those links uh, below for those other videos. Um, it's a pretty crisp uh, fall winter day here and I can really smell the snow so I think it's coming soon so we are gonna need to get out uh, log trucking here shortly so if you'd like to come trucking with me in this 1964 Kenworth log truck please remember to click like and subscribe below thank you so much for watching